god! Oh my god! <laughs>what's going on youtube and what up to the dragon squad i am ember the blaze and i'm glacier the iceborn and we are reaction, reaction dragons. dragons coming to you from the dragon slayer and a quick reminder guys if you like the vibe like and subscribe doesn't cost a dime and helps us go full time why are you making it complicated it's easy thanks so much for the support guys now what's on the menu for today glacier back at you with one of our new favorite shows it's umbrella academy season one episode two run boy run run boy run and uh yeah i mean i thoroughly enjoyed the first episode i'm glad we're fully into the show now and yeah i mean the main question is is of course who caused the apocalypse because number five said it's happening in eight days so now the clock is ticking um hopefully of course they find a way to stop it because he's kind of still stumped on how to actually stop it but i still want to know what or who caused it or is it a war that caused it um but also i want to know what did reginald know because i do feel like somebody took him out because he knew too much or he you know knew how to stop it maybe and who killed him for that matter i don't think it was diego i think he just took the monocle just for like sentimental purposes because they have some history that never got hashed out before his death and to start all off like what caused those mystery pregnancies in you know 1989 was that just like a national phenomenon are they going to go into that i'm not sure um, and then as far as uh ben i want to know what happened to ben i want to know uh i guess what your favorite characters are right now because if it's, i had to pick right now i would say number five and Klaus. i'd probably say the same ben is, a, is an intriguing character too just like from the mystery standpoint and the fact that only klaus can see him now because he's dead you know, and also his skill set i mean somebody comment down below that he's able to like summon these creatures from his stomach i believe so I just definitely, you know, he's interesting as like an enigma almost. I definitely want to know more about, about Ben. But other than that, I just want to get right into this episode and see what the hell's going to happen. Glacier, you ready? I'm ready. All right, guys. And as usual, just take a couple seconds. Hit the like button down below. The impressions do lead to more views. And our full watch along for the next episode will be waiting for you guys on Patreon. With that being said, let's fucking go. I think mom's name is Grace. I found that out too, so I got her name. Oh, all very disciplined. That's good. At least they had family dinner together. Yeah. Very proper. Number five? I have a question. You know the rules. No talking during mealtime. I want to time travel. No. Oh, so you had an interest. What? See? A spatial jump is trivial when compared with the unknowns of time travel. Damn. The other is akin to descending blindly into the depths of the freezing water and reappearing as an acorn. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> yeah. When you get that metaphor, you're ready. I'm not afraid. Fear isn't the issue. The effects it might have on your body, even on your mind, are far too unpredictable. Now, I forbid you to talk about this anymore. Damn. Yeah. I wonder if he's speaking from experience, though. You haven't been excused. Oh, is this when he, like, figures it out on his own? He's like, yeah, I'm gonna figure the fucking time travel. He's like, I'm over this shit. Woo! Is he already doing it? Damn. Bro, that's so crazy. Oh, oh shit, that's no. what happened. Damn, that's why it blew his mind. Like, uh, how far did I go? Wait, hold on. Wait, let me go back. Damn, that's the academy. What happened? Anyone? I want to see what happens when he tries to go back, though. It's like, let me go. Oh, shit. Oh, no. See? He's fucked. You're not ready. Now you're the acorn. <laughs> God. Damn it, number five. Yeah, now you're. I mean, he got five. back, but still, he's probably like in this moment, like took him forty. How long? Forty-five 40 years. Forty-five years. Like, how did you find food? He's like Will Smith, and I am legend now. <laughs> nice title drop. I survived on scraps. Oh, there's your answer. Canned food, cockroaches. Oh. If the world threw at us, we found a way to overcome it. Didn't we? Yeah, it was we. Why did you just time travel back? Gee, wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> time travel is a crapshoot. I went into the ice and you're like, cool. I don't even remember the analogy. You think I didn't try everything to get back to my family? But last episode, number five mentioned someone named Dolores, I think. Maybe that's the person he's talking about when he says we. Oh, yeah. Um, whose eyeball is that? Hopefully it's a glass eye. I think it's a glass eye. No. Mary Tech? Okay. Who are you? Is that Mary J. Blige? Reservation for Here's in Muchacha. Did they work for that same agency that tried to attack number five? I believe there's a package waiting for us. Damn, what do you know? Oh, guns, great. Go ahead, just say it. First they cut her per diem and then her dental and... God. Now we don't even get our own rooms. Damn, they don't have dental? Assassins with benefits. That's hilarious. What are you doing? It's not like we're gonna use it while we're doing the job anyway. It's against protocol. We gotta have it with us at all times. What is that thing? Yep. 
mystery box, okay. And there was a picture in the box too, is that Reginald? Or someone else? I mean, he did already. Never been after one of our own before. Oh shit, one of our own. So, oh shit, actually that might be number five. Oh, the, oh, the old number five? Yeah, remember they don't know that he's young. Oh, that's true. They're they said the he's a former employee, like one of our own. And that's why he has a tracker. What? And that's why, that would make sense why he has a tracker. Yeah, that's why I did the transition to the tracker. This guy got his neck snapped. Yeah, froggily. Kills. These guys were definitely professional. Now would explain number five's fighting skills too. Damn, yeah, one of our own. That means those two must be froggy. So in the future at some point he joined this Maritech group, I guess. I'm Detective Patch. Hi. Agnes. Agnes Rofka. I, well, I went into the back room uh, to just get some more change. They drove away. Uh, the kid has an alibi now. Yeah, fuck that. Get in her desk. And by the time I got back in here, everyone was here. Anyone else in the shop. So number five has an alibi now because she said that he left with the truck driver guy. Yep. I already told the other detective everything. Other detective? What other detective? Oh, maybe Cha Cha Hazel? Or Diego? Or Diego? Hang on. Let me just... What the fuck? <laughs> hang on, hang on. Talk to my witnesses, understand? Let me catch you up to speed, you Dora. Don't call me that. Damn. So this is like, is this like a Batman Detective Gordon scenario? That you can keep. I used to like that. Not anymore. Oh, damn, they used to date. You know, someday I'd really. Mm -hmm. Does Clara even know about me? What are you talking about? Of course she knows about you. Yeah, no, it's just a I definitely sense a romantic relationship here. When Claire was little, I used to uh, read her books about the moon. I'd tell her her uncle was living up there. Her own personal superhero. Wow. That's cool. That makes it more complicated if they are romantically involved. She's already referred to him as uncle. The uncle. Yeah. I don't think... I'll just list our relationship as it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. Oh god, meanwhile. Why Klaus? Oh my god. Gosh, yeah, so I'm saying right here to those voices. My speedo, by the way. Uh, there's no point. You're out of drugs. Shut your pile. Oh, that's why it's coming back, you know, drugs. A glass of orange juice or some eggs. Can't smoke eggs. <laughs> Items from your father's office have gone missing. In particular, an ornate box with pearl inlay. Really? Oh yeah, you stole it. Yeah. Any idea where it went? God, Pogo knows exactly where it went. Yep. Tell me you didn't pawn it. God, and all that shit's probably really important too. All right, so shit's uh, his journal. Wow, Klaus. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I gotta do what I gotta do. No, no idea. Sorry, liar. Drop dead. Oh, God. Damn. So whoever took it would be absolved of any blame or consequences. Well, lucky bastard. God. Indeed. Indeed. Damn. Yeah. Read between the lines, Klaus. I know you did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know you did. I to know who this belongs to. Where did you get that? I found it. At a playground, actually. Uh, must have just popped out. <laughs> oh, so maybe Meritech's not the organization, huh? but it's who gave that glass eye. Yeah, you're just... not touching this eye. Ooh. Yeah. Why you listen here, young man? <laughs> no one. You listen to me, asshole. <laughs> I've come a long way for this. There's some shit your pea brain couldn't even call. <laughs> oh, shit. After you're playing number five, it's killing it. Yeah. Right? Remember the victim who got stabbed in the carotid artery? Fingerprints on the knife don't match any of our Oh, knives. shit. It gets weirder. It did match an unsolved cold case that came back circa, get this, 1938. What? Holy shit. You tell them to run it again. Damn, number five really been time traveling. Damn, it matches the case back then. Uncuff him. Holy shit. Oh, damn, look, he kept, she kept it overnight. Damn, just out of spite. Why won't you put that badge down for one day and come out on the streets with me? Damn, do some real police work. I think you missed some things when you got yourself thrown out of the police academy. Ah, huh, plot thickens. I would love to play cops and robbers, wear a mask and feel important, but guess what? Recess is over. Damn, damn. It's grown up. I got bills and shit. Diego Harper's. Well, if you see him, you can tell him I'm this far from firing his ass. He works here. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Mom's the floor. We exchange for the back room. Oh, okay. Damn. I like how we're finding more about Diego this episode. So now we know Diego's bat cave, so to speak. Yep. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yep. Oh, Ooh. fuck. Damn. Cha-cha. 
Oh no! No! On the nipples! Don't do them like that, Cha Cha. Delicious. You want half? Damn, took his lunch too. Damn. God damn! <laughs> Switches the sandwich in the other hand. Good job. Was there anyone else in the donut shop with you last night, Sid? I don't know, just the waitress and some kid. He said something yeah. about coming there when he was young. Oh shit! Yeah. You thinking what I'm thinking? Time travels a bitch. Especially without a briefcase. What if the kid is number five? Oh shit! Figure it out. Yeah! Fuck! God! Chacha's on some Scarface shit. But the department store, that's it. I swear. Ah, uh, yeah, you do that. Oh, yeah, the address. Damn. Jeez, if I take these things off my nipples. So they're slowly following the breakroom trail. You're probably better off here. No, I'm probably better off with my daughter. I'm sorry, I didn't. Well, you know, if I wanted advice, Vanya, no offense, it wouldn't be from you. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm snapping at her. She's trying to help. I feel so bad for that. You separate yourself from yeah. everyone and everything you always have. Because dad made me. Did dad make Damn. you write that book about us, too? Well, that's probably resentment. They're holding that over her head for the show. I want to know what she wrote in the book, though. I want to know more childhood history, though. I mean, don't take it hard. Allison is just in a really shitty mood. Obviously, you caught her at a bad time. Yeah. Who gave you permission to lay your head on my son? <laughs> oh, no. I didn't touch your son. Oh, really? Well, then how did he get that swollen lip, then? He doesn't have a swollen lip. <laughs> oh, my God. I want it. Name, please, now. Peace on Earth. That's so sweet. God! Oh, no. <laughs> God, that hurt. Oh, my God, Klaus. You beat the shit out of us. <laughs> you beat the shit out of us. And there are two witnesses. And the other lady in the back is completely oblivious in the other room. Grand, trust me, I've been there. Little piece of chicken like you. Oh, my God. You're going to get passed around. But... God! <laughs> with that serial number can't be right it hasn't even been manufactured yet oh shit it's from the future hmm. all those years by yourself it's gonna screw with your head i wasn't alone dolores her name was dolores ah been for over 30 years damn it's good cool vanya like takes her violin lesson so seriously i hope she has something else man i feel bad for her i'm your four o'clock i forgot Oh, violin lessons. So she's a violin teacher. Okay, that makes sense. Right, she gets some extra money. Right, she gets money. I don't think Luther's gonna be there, but he's gonna notice that someone's snooping. Did he compete here too? Oh, he sees the hair. Damn, you observant motherfucker. Bro! Good smell it was you. What the hell? Oh shit, okay, so <laughs> What the hell? You were fighting the night that Dad died. Oh, see, he was a boxer there. Except with the guys out there. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have to prove my innocence to you. You have a nice day, brother. Um, yeah. Typical sibling rivalry. It's like, I don't like you, but like by default, you're my brother, so I have to you know, <laughs> treat you like that. But. but he loved violin, and that was not my thing. But I guess I'm here to understand him better, if that makes any sense. Damn. One of his dad's like an important character we don't know about yeah. yet. Never be. That's it. Or maybe they just relate. Family. Yeah. I have a shop in um, Bricktown. Come by sometime. Maybe you want to check it out. Ooh, shoot your shot. I remember in the first episode, Allison said something about like she said a rumor and it happened and it is what it is. I wonder if that has something to do with why she can see Patrick got custody. Damn it. Alone in this huge house for so long. Well, one grows used to things. Even if sometimes. Yeah, it's fucked up, Pogo. Damn. Come with me. I want to show you something. It might just cheer you up. So I'm guessing Grace wasn't much of a companion all those years. Fully extinguish that cigarette. Wouldn't Damn. Just start a fire. Yeah, there's a lot of wood. And that sucks because in the future, eight days from now, the ancient is on fire. Yeah. Fuck. Most families have home movies to look back on. We have surveillance footage. You'll probably find a clue. So Vani's been playing violin since she was a kid. Why didn't we include her? I mean, if anybody ever treated Claire like that, I can't even imagine. Ah, now you have perspective. Yeah. Yeah. See, when Vanya wrote that book, she probably had like an outside looking in perspective on everybody else, and she was always by herself. Oh, God. The fuck would you see? Dad. Damn, first tape she pulls out, she uh -oh. finds some shit. 
where we're doing she, it. But what made her react like that that didn't make Pogo react like that? Maybe it's something like either Pogo knows him to keep it a secret or he didn't see it. Maybe it's like a band that he used to listen to? Pussycats? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, he said Dolores. That often reminds him of her. Good to see you. Or damn, is that is it, it is like an I Am Legend thing. I've missed you. Oh, Remember when, when Will Smith was talking to the man, can say hi to me. It's been a rough couple of days. Damn, that's kind of sad. Oh no, they're God, and they're, they made it quick. Oh fuck. Oh, they're gonna kill Dolores, no! No! Dolores! God! Oh my god, they shot her down. I've never been that sad of a fucking mannequin getting shot. Oh no, I'm right back for you. Stay out of the light. Damn, I love the music choice yeah. in the show. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering, can, she tele can he teleport with her? Why not? Yeah, can he take other objects? Maybe he could, right? I mean, he could take his clothes on his body, so why not? Damn, seems like it's a little harder. Oh shit, the cops saved his ass. See ya. Oh. What? You were right about dad. I gotta show you something. Show me! Oh no, what did she find? So must have been a camera Dolores. footage of him in his room. What the hell happened to you? Can we help? There's nothing you can do. Damn. Unless you have super glue. Oh, damn. Luther. Damn. Uh, and he had the glass eye. Oh, it is Luther. He had the... He was the last one to have the glass eye? Damn. Maybe yeah. trying to stop who did it. Yeah. That probably belonged. Yeah. Probably was trying to get that. Damn, so the culprit that caused this has a glass eye. So I wonder if the last stand was in front of the mansion, like every, the squad tried to stop him. Oh damn, Diego, Diego. Allison, that's locked. Please don't find Pogo in the rubble. Damn, Klaus. God, Klaus. Yeah, damn. the umbrella. It's fucked. Love it. Shot. Shot. Fuck. Damn. Holy shit. All right, run, boy, run. Glacier, what do you think? Uh, another great episode, entertaining. Um, I mean, a lot of highlights of this episode. There's a lot of stuff we found out. I think one of my favorite scenes was when uh, number five and Klaus were interrogating the doctor. Oh, the eye doctor, the Ameritech. That shit was hilarious. Like, Because it shows that, you know, sometimes crazy gets the job done because it was Klaus going off and his, doing his Klaus thing. Like, I'm getting my fucking $20. <laughs> yeah, I need his <laughs> drugs. I need, I need his money. So, yeah. But, but you know that feel for him because at the beginning of the episode, He's like, you hear all those voices. I mean, you can see why he's trying to suppress the, the powers. I mean, other than, I don't think he minds talking to Ben. Yeah, Ben's Ben there okay. as a friend, but everybody else, like, please help me, Klaus, help me. Ah! Screaming crazy like, shit. I would be like, that's what I'm wondering, is only drugs numb it, or does he have to do, maybe there's something else he can do. But if nothing else, we know that buying drugs and or food is the motivator for Klaus, where he starts yep. actually contributing <laughs> to the mission there, so. But, um, but yeah, one thing, we thought initially that Meritech was the, maybe the company or the organization that attacked number five in the first episode. Not sure that they just made the prosthetic eye. But whoever own, whoever ends up getting that prosthetic eye in the next eight days, I think is the one that caused the apocalypse. Especially if you go to the end scene where you get more on what number five sees in yep. that future, you see that pretty much all the Umbrella Academy minus, I don't think we saw Vanya there, because I don't think Vanya was there for the fight. But I'm guessing maybe the final stand against the villain with the glass eye happened outside the mansion. They all died and then the yep. apocalypse happened. Because yep. they're all just like there in the rubble. Or maybe they died from whatever happened that caused the apocalypse. Yep. And that eye, I think that uh, it, either the eye is the person that caused it or they have something to do with causing it. Yeah, there's some kind of an accomplice. They're, they're an accomplice, yeah, they're, they're part um, of it. But also, like, speaking of that organization, so it seems like they're like a time traveling assassins corporation, which right. is kind of funny because they have benefits and per diems, even though it's kind of shitty at this point. But I'm, we're thinking that they used the briefcase, um, Cha Cha and Hazel specifically, yeah. used that briefcase that they stowed away in the hotel to time travel. Yeah, because they said in a scene where uh, I think when they're torturing the guy with when they had the thing on his nipples, yeah. they were like, oh, do you think what I'm thinking? Because he's, he's talking about a young kid being young. He's, he's traveling without a briefcase, which means, okay, you can travel with the briefcase. So you're hinting yeah. that you can use that briefcase to travel. So what we're thinking is at some point in the future, number five, as an older version of himself, gets recruited by this assassin's organization. And then he's time traveling with the briefcase, maybe because he can't figure out how to go back using his natural powers yet. Maybe, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And he goes back to 1938 at some point and does a job, which is why they the fingerprints they found on the, on the knife or on the pencil, yeah. whatever they use, dates back to a crime that happened in 1938. Yep. Now, one thing we're trying to figure out is if the world ends in eight days, like say we're drawing out a timeline, the world's 
stops in eight days from now, yep. right? How the fuck is there an, an assassin's organization that creates the technology to time travel? Because that sounds like some shit that would have happened in the future, especially if they recruited, you know, that is true. 58-year-old number five. That Actually, that is true. So it leads I me to believe that. that number five is leaving out details of what happens in the future. Maybe he is not the only person that's alive. Yeah, because he's there for 30 years. There's no way that he was just there for 30 years and then came back. I think Obviously, maybe he, he was... Had to, he had to go to 1938. He had yeah. to do a job. They have a picture of him. They have a tracker in him, which means, you know, he yeah, they was a tracker. tracker. We had Merchie even said, we got to kill one of our own. Yeah, so he's definitely a former employee there. For that. I feel like that's for sure. Um, now, what I'm thinking is maybe he was living by himself in like an I Am Legend scenario for, you know, however long, 30, 40 years. And that's why he became, he pretty much like made a friend slash a wife out of Dolores, yep. which is sad. Like it was, it was weird. I was like, why am I feeling so much for Dolores? I just met her. She's a fucking mannequin. But <laughs> it reminds me like when I saw Castaway and I had those feelings for Wilson. Yeah, when Wilson like floated up. Wilson. Yeah, because you think, because it's because earlier he said that he was with her for 30 years. So I'm thinking, damn, that sucks. He, this is the only friend he had for 30 years. And then she just gets blown up as soon as he like rekindles. It's funny, when you, she was talking to her at first. You're like, oh, she probably, she probably say now mannequin right. reminds her of Dolores. And you start, <laughs> So how was your day? Oh shit, this is the one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, fuck. Yeah, it definitely remind me of I Am Legend there. So I'm thinking maybe at some point he lived throughout his life thinking he's the only person there. And then he got recruited by his agency, realizing that I guess the apocalypse whatever happened did not kill everybody. And then they recruited him. He time traveled with them. And then at some point he figured out how to time travel using his own powers. And that's when he went back to his younger body. What's crazy now is like, remember the first group that came in the first episode that came out for number five? It's just, I think it's the same organization as uh, the two. Definitely, yeah, Cha-Cha and Hazel. Yeah, yeah Cha-Cha and Hazel. But now it doesn't seem like, because that first group was like, you can come back with us. You know what they do this way. Cha-Cha and Hazel just start shooting. Like it's not, it's not like well, maybe because he because he killed them now they're like oh no it's not dead or alive anymore it's just dead it's just dead you're right i was like damn now yeah, first there. they were trying to capture him and then now it's just like no put a bill in his head ask questions yeah, like, he's killed our whole squad yeah put a bill in his head for sure that's why i um, hired you too so yeah so there's that um but I, I definitely feel like number five is hiding information about what else happened in the future yep or maybe not maybe hiding he just hasn't gotten around to it yet he hasn't got around to it. maybe he doesn't think like it maybe it's just like maybe there in his mind there is an apocalypse he's probably thinking it's an apocalypse to the ones that matter to him because his family died and that's what's most important so all the other shit extra shit about him like his life is like this is irrelevant because the world ends in seven yeah you guys are all gonna die so me telling you all this extra <laughs> shit doesn't matter but yeah, Johnny, that's matter because I want to know. Yeah, that was us, but not to them because you're not going to be around to see it. But yeah. okay, so so other than that, and then um, yeah. so yeah, we're thinking that the owner of the eye caused the apocalypse. Now we got to keep our eyes peeled of anybody that loses their eye over the course of the next eight days in the show's timeline. Now I'm not sure if it's somebody we've already met or if it's going to be some mystery character. I'm not. Like, maybe I'm reaching, but when Vani was giving violin lessons to that new guy Leonard, I feel like Leonard is going to be an important part of the story. Maybe it's just going to be like a an attempted love interest. He's got a crush on Vani, obviously. But the way like they connect because you know his dad died, her dad obviously died so they have that to, that they have the common, family problems too but the family problems. maybe there's something more about him what if he ends up being involved in the whole glass eye conspiracy maybe or maybe not i'm yeah. not i mean he comes off kind of awkward too so it comes off awkward which kind of leads me to believe like oh we're supposed to like you know subconsciously oh he's not a suspect he's just a, a dorky love interest but whether there's more to him i don't know i'm just kind of spaghetti on the wall i'm gonna put that out there maybe it sticks who knows but um we definitely recognize him because you said that he was an overlord and then i when i looked at the credits i was like fuck he was in that movie the big short the big short yeah, which is one of my favorite movies yeah so that's where we recognize him from um but i also like how or he also could just be someone that makes the brings out vanya more because Va like yeah vanya, vanya is kind of like, like isolated from isolated else. so maybe his character will but she does teach other kids not other adults not other adults so and she's like starting to open up more so it's some it's either gonna be like somebody kind of like gives her more of a character arc or he has a more pivotal role in the or, big scheme yeah of or he's a big scheme of things yeah one or the other okay so moving on to i like how this episode gave us more of diego's backstory because first in the first episode it was like, okay he's a vigilante he's kind of a dick but he's got like skeletons in his closet with his dad like unsolved like issues which kind of explains why he's like yep. he's in a dark place now but so apparently he was an ex-cop which explains how he met detective patch or eudora yeah the first name so since you know, they seems like they had a romantic history, yep. and then he got kicked out of the academy, and he and ended probably up, like those those things clash where he wants to be a vigilante, she's by the book. Yeah, he wants to do happen. stuff that the cops won't, the academy won't let him do because of the red tape. And that's and, probably why he went to the academy it was probably honestly for her. And then she's like, you know, this is gonna work. You're gonna go to the academy. When he got kicked out, he's like, well, fuck it, I'm still gonna be yeah. a vigilante. But he was definitely like, um, he went to that gym and he worked out a deal with the gym guy to like, you know, I rent a room, you give me a place to stay, um, I get a job here. But he was also a boxer there as well so that's yep. how he has history of the boxing gym but that's kind of like his like bat cape so to speak and it's cool that like it seems like him and, and detective patch have this like batman commissioner gordon relationship you know if they were having sex or whatever but um, a little bit worse because gordon didn't put batman in handcuffs for being on the crime scene yeah i mean he probably wanted to in the beginning but then once he realized that you know 
he needed Batman. But anyways, going on a tangent there. Um, so yeah, it's cool that the relationship's there, but I'm sure that's gonna interfere because at the same time, now she's still a detective. He even offered to like, hey, why don't you come out on a night with me and see how I do things vigilante stuff. I feel like at some point her hands are gonna be tied or she's gonna take Diego's advice yep. and kind of do things off the book, off the record to catch whoever is behind this these killings because she wants yep. to know who's behind the killing of the men in the, in the diner. Also, who killed Sid? Because Sid got tortured. That showed me Chacha's a ruthless motherfucker. Yeah, both of them are. They're both. I mean, yeah, because punched him in the fucking face. He had no mayo on a tuna sandwich. Yeah, he literally like changed the, the sandwich to his other hand so he could jab him right in the nose. <laughs> He's like, oh like I'm gonna eat your lunch. No I'm fucking punch. mayo. Yeah, no yeah. mayo. Because Hazel's definitely a sociopath too. Because he's just like watching this shit has no problem with it whatsoever. Also, so bad for that guy. He's just Regular day, He's, his job's probably not that good anyways because you have to go tow people's cars. You get the wrong person, like, you're towing my fucking car. So he's probably going on a, a so lunch just, break. Didn't even get to eat lunch. So now people are, you know how mad, mad you get before you eat lunch? First of all, you strap things to my nipples, you electrocute me, you take yeah. my tuna sandwich and you insult the way I make it, and you punch me in the face. Maybe yeah, some <laughs> deep connection to sit. I'll set up the fuck, bro. But yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, but yeah put, yourself, put yourself in your shoes. I know, it sucks. His life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't deserve it. He wasn't God, an damn, bro. But yeah, okay, so so yeah, I think that yeah, at some point if there was like a, a cop code, Eudora's gonna have to break the code and he's yeah. just probably gonna team up with Diego. Especially when the apocalypse coming, like, bro, sorry, I, I don't give a you're gonna arrest me? I'm in life in prison? <laughs> life ends in seven days. But he doesn't know that yet. Diego doesn't know what's about to go down. Right. But Luther, I mean, I guess Luther, you know, I guess you know, at least he's, you know, kinda off of Diego's tracks. So I don't know. For the reason he, he thought for sure Diego had something to do with their dad's death. But at least now he knows that he has an alibi because he had a boxing yeah. fight that night. Um but they still, I mean, they're not fisticuffing it out, but at least yeah. I mean there's still something there. It's one of those like, I love you as a brother, but I don't like you very much. Yeah, I mean, because they found out that Diego had an alibi he was fighting that night. But still, Diego's like, I don't have to prove my innocence to you. I know I'm innocent. But You're the only one that's... We do find out Luther's did have good innocence. Luther's not, yeah, Luther's definitely on the right track because whatever Allison found on that tape when she was kind of like when uh, Pogo was showing her the, the surveillance room, she sees something on the tape involving Reginald, probably somebody creeping into his bedroom that night, but we don't see what's on the tape because then it cuts to- I wonder if Pogo it, saw it too, because it was like her reaction, obviously if it's something about her mom, you're right about mom, that means, I would think Pogo would have saw it. Because remember at the beginning, Pogo called out um, Klaus, Klaus, when he like, well not called him out, but you know what I mean, he indirectly- He, he knows that he took the, the now, journal. Does he know because of his character? Like he's just assuming, or does he know because he saw the surveillance? Like, I saw you take that shit because I have surveillance. There's cameras everywhere. I would probably say, maybe both. He's He's like, I know, yeah, I know you still because I fucking see you, and I know you're lying to me because you're you. <laughs> but but yeah, he's definitely saying uh, whoever you know returns it, there's not gonna be any any further you know and he said trouble there's for you. Context in that context in that yeah, book. there's that, that journal, it had, but it had R H on it. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. So it's definitely Reginald's journal, which oh, probably okay. has some. He said it's priceless, so it's probably some secrets like over the years about the Umbrella Academy, maybe Dude, about that shit the, in the garbage. Yeah, it's in the dumpsters. So now hopefully they have to go. Do they have to go to the? the landfill to find that shit? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, probably, yeah. Or eventually that's gonna be, I mean, that's like, that's crazy. That's like, remember like a small scene that he threw that in there. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. Until we start talking. That's like a whole like montage of what, what led him to wake up in his fucking underwear <laughs> with Ben. But, but yeah, Um. and then yeah, I mean, as far as Vanya goes, I wanna know what's in that book. It's, Cause maybe the secrets that are in the book or maybe one of the secrets is a clue to what happened. Cause it seems like with Vanya, she's always so isolated as a kid, which explains why she took the violin lessons. Um. But she probably was looking at the other kids from an outside perspective. And I think it's good that Allison kind of saw that in the surveillance, and now Allison has perspective, like why, maybe I shouldn't be such an asshole to Vanya. Yeah. Cause I don't, cause that's like she doesn't understand too. where I'm coming from with my whole shit with my ex-husband and my kid. But I don't know where, I don't know where she's coming from. from. I'm not, you, know, you don't know that until you walk in someone else's yeah, shoes. Yeah, it's all But I'm glad that she gets perspective. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, yeah, I love the way the show's going. It's definitely like this mystery that we're trying to figure out and along with everybody else. Cause the only person that really knows what's going on is number five but at the same time. He doesn't know what caused it. So he's still trying to figure that out too. Yep. But I love how like, you know, and each- And number five, you said something too, he's a great actor. Yeah, number five, the kid that plays him is a great actor. Because imagine, he's playing, you know, a 14 or 15 year old kid. Yeah. And, but with the soul of a 58 year old. So it's good that he has like that maturity behind his voice when he talks to other people. It's crazy, I haven't seen him. I don't know if there's other movies or shows. This might have been seen. like his acting debut, who knows? Maybe, yeah, but he's, he's killing it. No, he is killing it in his role. The whole cast is killing it, but I just like to point out. Just yeah, Klaus and number five are doing the best acting wise. Because they're both like such dynamic characters. Yeah. And they work great together. And that, that whole scene was definitely a highlight. But yeah, um, yeah final thoughts, Glacier? Yeah, final thoughts. Yeah, great episode, great show. It's growing on me. Um, one, another one of these shows that, like I said, if we weren't reacting, we'd have a bunch of other content coming out that we had to react to. I'd binge watch it in one day. I would. Yeah. That's how good the show is, Dragon Certified. But yeah, we're definitely glad we get to watch with you guys because obviously this is a fan favorite amongst the community as well. Yep. But yeah, I definitely want to see where this goes because I feel like there's a big plot twist around the horizon. But yeah, Dragon Certified, fucking hit it. 
And there you have it, guys. Another one in the books. Real question is, what you guys think in there in Drag Sweat Land? Um, is there any kind of points that we, any points that we made that we're kind of off on, or any other Easter eggs that you guys know about? Leave it down below. Leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, join the Dragon Squad. And remember, it doesn't matter if you're up the Fire Squad or the Ice Squad. At the end of the day, when you're a dragon, you're a dragon. That's the end of the video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We are Reaction Dragons. I am Ember, the Blaze, and I'm Glacier, the Iceborn. And until next time, we'll see you next time. time.